always talk about how it's all about us and it's tough looking some of these guys in the eye knowing that we didn't do as much as we could and um it's tough heading back to bronco nation like that too i know it's a community that cares a lot about this team and we care a lot about the community and behind closed doors i know we put a lot of work in and we're intentional we care about each other and it's just frustrating. I mean, all I can say is sorry. I feel bad for the guys that didn't play tonight. I feel bad for Bronco Nation. I feel bad for the families that traveled out here. And all we can do is just move on. Next week, we'll self-scout. We'll get it figured out. We care about each other a lot, and we'll get it figured out. Tough one. In all my years of covering the Boise State football team, I don't know if I can remember a player displaying that type of emotion. Marco Notriani moved to tears after that loss in the postgame press conference and uh, a tough one there. Notriani, hardly the problem with the program. He uh, led the team in tackles two weeks ago with 10 uh, against Colorado State. He's got a team high 52 stops on the season to go along with four and a half tackles for loss. And this is a guy that really had to fill in some big shoes. DJ Schramm injured early in the season. And all of a sudden, a kid that's a redshirt sophomore coming off an injury uh, plague season where he missed most of the year is put in a role where he's really got to shine for this Boise State defense. Okay, Kala Canijo joins us once again on Bronco Roundup Game Day. Uh, did you ever have a moment like that. And uh, what do you think about the emotion of Marco Notriani? I, I got to tell you, as a former athlete, that's the type of guy you want to go to war mm -hmm. with, right? Yep, yeah, you see the passion and you see how much he cares and other guys on the team care. And when you feel it down to the core in that way, it motivates you even more to do all the things that you know we had talked about before and really focusing on what you need to do to get yourself back in the right spot and carrying a lot of weight of the community and the guys that played before mm -hmm. and the guys, you know, even more importantly, that are right next to you. What is it like to, to walk into a post-game press conference after a loss? I mean, you couldn't see there with Marco, but both elbows were, were dripping with blood. You could kind of see the fact that he had a black eye. He missed one defensive snap out of 76, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, you know, 15 minutes after that type of loss, he's got to sit there and try to gather his yeah. thoughts. and and do so in front of cameras in what will eventually be the entire city of Boise. Yeah, you pour everything into, you know, those three or four hours that you're out there. And a lot of times, you don't even have time to really digest those emotions mm -hmm. and feelings and process what you need to do to move forward. So seeing something like that, you know it's coming from his heart mm -hmm. and the heartbeat of that defense and the locker room because, you know, you're just ex expressing your true emotions. Yeah, I, I kind of respected him too because mm -hmm. he did take a second there and he was like, um, we asked him a question. He said, you know what, honestly, I'm still just trying to process this. And yeah. it, just, it just made the moment feel really real. So when you look at this, it's not the start the defense wanted to get out to this season, but there's still a ton of optimism throughout the program. I think part of that is because there's been glimpses of what this team can do. They had a, a second-half shutout against San Jose State, a first-half shutout against Colorado State. How encouraging are moments like those when this team is still trying to kind of fi figure out who they are, what they do well? Yeah, when you know you're capable and you – that, that gives you confidence, right, going into the week. Okay, I've done this before. There were times where I weren't, wasn't as good at it, but I know I'm capable of it if I do the right things to put myself in that position. And so if I'm on the defense, I'm, I'm figuring out, okay, how do I put it all together at once, right? Start to finish, every single play is as important as the last play of the game that is for all the marbles. You know, when we look at the, the numbers, and, you know, Spencer Danielson said it, he knows the stats. Mm -hmm. They're not where this program wants them to be. Um, but w when, when you watch a game, Kekala, and I, I know Boise State's given up 30 points, I think a lot of people that watch are like, every single play is bad, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But in reality, when you go back and you watch it, how, how many plays are, are the difference maker in the outcome of a college football game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's usually, you know, anywhere between five to eight plays that are the plays that change the tide of the game and change the momentum. And so when you're out there on the field as a defense, you know, first and ten, which a lot of people don't think is very important, mm -hmm. is the most important play to you. If you win first and ten, now you're in second and long, second and, you know, negative yards, and that puts you in a better spot on third down. And so it's continuing to stack all of those things together and give yourself a shot in those five or eight plays, you know, to have the advantageous position on the field. And so 
having the mentality and the focus and the discipline to take every single play very seriously and important and knowing that it could be this play, I don't know, you know, if I mis-execute, it might be this play. So executing every single play. That's why, you know, you, if you really watch this and you can see sometimes, like, I don't think that the defense is as far as mm -hmm. it seems. And if they can figure out this small number of plays, then it will add up to be a massive difference. Uh, you bring up first and second down. I want to talk about third down because mm -hmm. during that stretch, the second half against San Jose State, and for almost the entire Colorado State game, with the exception of the last 401, Boise State allows 10 points over 85 minutes and 59 seconds, right? Third down continues to be a little bit of a problem, despite the fact they are forcing some third and longs. Mm -hmm. Boise State has had trouble pressuring the quarterback this season, especially with just a traditional front where they don't blitz. Right. Um, what is what is the key to them fixing what they do on third down? Because they get into these favorable situations and they can't just quite get off the field on what they call that money down. Yeah, I think it's a couple things. The first one is you have to have your pass rush and your secondary work in, in unison and together, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're bringing a certain pressure, how do we show that differently on the back end to give ourselves a chance for the quarterback to take a split second and really think once he catches the ball, what's actually going on, right? Mm -hmm. If we show him something differently before the snap, he gets the ball, looks up, and it's completely different after the snap. Now there's some hesitation there and confusion, which is one of the ways that you can help your pressure and your scheme be more, you know, ex execute better in those situations. And then I think it comes down to um, doing your job to get yourself in position, but then going above and beyond sometimes to put your body on the line or do something you know, outside of just doing your job that's gonna make a play at the end. Whether it's a pass breakup, whether it's a tackle, whether it's a sack, you know, and getting off of that last block and mm -hmm. reaching out and touching the quarterback just enough. And so there's just that little bit more that has to happen on those very important downs. Before we let you go, I got to ask you about your little brother. Yeah. You had, I know that you loved playing with him. And uh, during the heat of the battle, you know, you used to be able to go put your arm around him and mm -hmm. help him out. And I'm sure there were cases where vice versa. What is it like now? You know, I, I saw you on the sidelines, by the way. I didn't know you were there. We, yeah. we got a shot of you um, last week. I had no yeah. idea you were in Fort Collins. But what, um, what is it like standing on the sidelines, sitting in the stands, mm -hmm. watching little bro do his thing? Yeah, I think, you know, the ups and downs, all of it in between, I'm still proud to see him out there and, mm -hmm. and competing and doing the best that he can to help the team win um, and being accountable for, you know, his role in the defense. And so as a big brother now, not being on the sideline in the heat of the battle, <laughs> I got to wait and hold all of my, you know, thoughts and advice and congratulations and sharing successes with him for after the game. Mm -hmm. And so I look forward to always doing that with him as soon as he comes off the field, whether, you know, I'm watching from the TV or waiting outside the locker room and just being able to continue to lift him up. We appreciate you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, guys. We're going to rope you back into some more stuff uh, throughout the, uh, the rest of the season. Kay Calla and uh, I, I, you are a perfect example of what, every, what Boise State wants their alumni to be. So we appreciate you joining us this I morning. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Go All Broncos. Right. Kay Calla Kaniho, uh, his little brother, looking the ball out today.